And let me turn off the chimes for the people that come in. Hi, welcome to today's call. We have a very, very um, special guest speaker, Matt Hall. Uh, am I getting this right? You're 34 years old, correct? I am. He's 34 years old. Uh, he and his wife, Shante, live in Utah with their three kids. They love spending time in nature and traveling the world to support their team. If you follow him on Instagram, you could see all the places he has been. He is a double diamond, which means he is, hit presidential diamond. Doterra gives him a second account, and they built that to diamond, so beyond presidential. He's a U.S. Founders 2.0, Brazil founder, and he has a team of over 200 diamonds. So he has a wealth of knowledge and experience. And I think the most important thing is, well, one of the important things is he's building today in 2024 and he's finding success today. And that's why we have him on the call. Um, we're so honored um, that he's here to share about the five momentum catalysts. I've met with some of his team while, while I was out in the Philippines. And so I just can't wait to hear from Matt. Uh, share his uh, knowledge with all of us. Awesome. Nice to be with you guys. Thank you for the invitation to share. And uh, I'm excited to introduce myself and make some new friends today. Um, so let me, let me get oriented here. I thought I'd start by just giving a brief two minute intro to our story. Uh, I've found that as successful leaders in doTERRA, maybe more than anything else, what we all have to become is professional collectors and tellers of stories. Um, and so hopefully my story will be one that you can add to your, your arsenal, you can add to your tool belt and share uh, when either, you know, to bring someone new into your team or to help someone on your team to keep going and keep striving to push forward. And so with that, um, my wife and I, as was said, uh, we, we have been with doTERRA now for 12 years. And uh, my wife was actually the first one to start using our products, as is common, I think, in the doTERRA community. She was living in Taiwan and going through one of the worst emotional phases of her life and looking for solutions. And it was a customer who shared with her uh, three bottles of essential oil. And she started using them and they transformed the way that she took took and takes care of her emotional health. And when she came back, that we, at that time, you know, we were just retail customers. We just bought from uh, some, she just bought the oils from some distributor in Taiwan that was selling the products and didn't really know that there was a business connected to doTERRA, didn't know there were other products, just knew that there was serenity, balance, and citrus bliss. And that was that was all <laughs> that she knew. And those three oils helped to carry her uh, through that period of her life. And then a year later, when she moved back to Utah, where we live, she found out that doTERRA was this opportunity. And um, to summarize, I guess, our, our that beginning story, um, we said she she came to her her family and friends and said hey do you guys know doTERRA she thought about maybe working for corporate um even contacted corporate i think to see if they had some some jobs speaking mandarin because she speaks mandarin and they said no and through uh through my father-in-law he had done a personal development uh retreat or seminar with andy goddard and so because andy was networking and making friends he was in the mind of my father-in-law as like the reference point for doTERRA in his world. And so my father-in-law said, hey, I know this guy that that I think is involved with this company. Why don't you guys sit down with them and learn more about the opportunity? And that's how it all began. So number one, our products, they uh, they really they really do the heavy lifting, right? It wasn't a distributor trying to earn a commission that sold the products to my wife. It was someone, a customer who had had a positive experience with the products that recommended them and she bought retail and used them for a year. And then they worked so well um, that, you know, that that got us interested and in, in, in the door. And then the second lesson from that is, are you the, the reference point that people have in their minds when they think of doTERRA? So if somebody, if somebody, were to give a reference to 
anyone that does doTERRA, would the people that you know, would they give your name? Are you that focal point in their minds? Um, and, you know, obviously the, the Goddards were that person. And I think, wow, we were technically a reference. <laughs> you know, we didn't know the Goddards before we started working with them. And today we have a team that does millions and millions and millions every single month in, in volume and sales. And it was because of a referral. Um, and so I think that those are a couple of good lessons for everyone. Now, I mean, I'm going to go through this. Sometimes I'll share some of, uh, some of our, um, healing hands experiences, but I just want to summarize our story. We got started at 22 years old. So the first three years we were actually building in university while, uh, while building a doTERRA business, we hit, uh, our story is not the fastest story of success. Uh, it might be the slowest presidential diamond. I'm not sure, but we hit elite relatively quickly. And then we st were stuck at elite working really hard, but stuck at elite for 10 months. And we actually quit our jobs in our second month because we saw these commission checks coming in and we thought, wow, this is amazing. This works. We could, we could live on this. Pretty soon we were donating plasma uh, to cover our LRP order and living on savings. And we really struggled for our first year. Then um, just through sheer persistence, we kept moving forward and uh, we were able to reach, while we were in university, we were able to reach the level of platinum. And then after those, after, um, after we graduated, we, we thought, oh, well, we're, you know, earning four or five, six thousand dollars a month. We could probably just focus on this. And so we've never looked back. We've literally, neither my wife or I have ever had a career outside of doTERRA. It's only been doTERRA. So kind of a fun, a fun story, but lots of ups and downs. Three kids came along that, that pathway. Um, and yeah, we're just super, super grateful. So then, uh, some people, let me see if I can, uh, I'm going to switch PowerPoints here. So some people might have heard uh, a little bit of our story, but after we hit that rank of platinum, this is actually, I like to show this graph. This is actually our uh, commissions, our Unilevel from day one of joining doTERRA all the way up until a few months ago when I made this PowerPoint. And you can see lots of ups and downs. You can see, obviously our first year is non-existent. You can't even see the little blue, <laughs> the little blue markings. Um, but then even then lots of ups and downs um, let's see. Okay. I don't have a pen. That's okay. So, um, what's interesting, let me go back. What's interesting is, you know, when you look at, you know, each little block here represents one month. And so you can see that during a one year period of time, sometimes our income dropped in half and then grew back to where we were before. Uh, there were other times there were three, there were four years that we were plateaued really at the rank of platinum. And when I say platinum, we were platinum requalifying as a gold, sometimes requalifying as a silver, right? And then occasionally hitting platinum. And so I share this with you. This represents, you know, 12 years of our life on this screen. And I share this with you to just see one, that there's going to be ups and downs, but two, that if you work hard in this vehicle, in this business of doTERRA, and if you never stop working hard, long-term, this is a good business. <laughs> this is a really solid, sustainable, powerful way to build freedom for your family. And you can see, you know, this was our first month, I think right here, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but this was our first month hitting presidential diamond. And then you can see we dropped down and hit blue diamond for four months. Uh, and then we hit presidential again. And you can basically see every four months. What does that mean? That means BOGO presidential. <laughs> that means on BOGOs, right? We were able to hit presidential diamond. And then over time, we were able to uh, solidify that rank. And then right here, you can see that biggest peak recently was when we hit double diamond. Um, so hopefully this just, shows you the power of what this business can do long-term if you're focused on the right activities. Now, the topic that I uh, that I thought I'd share on this call with you guys, besides just sharing you this context so that you can have a story to inspire you to keep moving forward and challenging yourself to learn new things, is I wanted to share some of the things that helped us break through some of our plateaus. We've had some really long plateaus, like 
one year at Elite might not seem like a long time for some, but for us, our goal was diamond our first year. And, and we were working in our minds as if we were going to hit diamond. We were working really, really hard. And so there was a shift that happened to help us go from Elite to then hitting Premier. We hit we requalified Premier for four months, and then we skipped Silver and hit Gold, and the very next month hit Platinum. So in two months, we went from Premier to Platinum. Now, yes, we stayed plateaued, and we had to solidify that Platinum rank, but that was a big disruption in our income and in our, in our business, right? Same thing with uh, these four years at Platinum. This right here, this peak right here is when we hit Diamond, um, and there are specific things that we did that helped us to break that barrier of, after four years, right? Four years of hitting the same rank. Some people start to question if it's even possible to, to still rank advance. And you can see all of the growth that happened after that. Um, and then you can see, you can see here, this represents like this, these BOGO presidential and requalifying blue. When you count out those months, that's two years. That's two years of really a plateau, like not advancing or solidifying our rank any more than, than just hitting presidential. And some of you are probably thinking, well, I would take that any day. Like I would love to be, a but the, the point is there were things that we changed and shifted and put into place that helped us to gain momentum again so that we could become really solid in that rank. So each new phase for us uh, there's been some different catalysts, and I wanted to share some of those. Now, um, the first thing I'll share, this is uh, actually our fast start earnings during the exact same period of time. And when you layer these over each other, you can see the power of enrolling, right, of being an enroller. So you can see the, the years that we were plateaued at Platinum, our personal enrollments and the enrollments of those who are closest to us, you can see the dip that that took. And it took a, a, a lot of personally enrolling. We actually, in our fourth year uh, as Platinum, we enrolled over 100 people in a 12-month period of time, new enrollments, where before we were averaging maybe two or three new customers a month. And we said, no, something's got to change. We got out of management mode and we went into recruiting mode. And we signed up 100 people that year. And that's part of what helped us get to Diamond and then create a new wave of momentum. And then you can see even just looking at these peaks, you know, peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys of phases of, of higher fast starts and lower fast starts. And even this most recent trend, you can see, you know, we scaled up, hit double diamond, and then you can see that the fast starts went into decline. So do you think that we're requalifying double diamond every month? No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. And for us to, to solidify that next rank, it's going to take another peak of personal enrollments and and uh hopefully that's that's you know powerful for you to see on a macro scale most people are not willing to have this kind of transparency um and i think i think that you know it's it's helpful to see uh both the good times and the bad times okay so i think of uh really quick i wanted to share some of the minimums of what i feel like are the minimums, it's the moat that protects your castle, right? The minimum level of effort and activity that's just going to help you maintain safety in your doTERRA castle and priority. Um, then there's obviously your standards and your normal goals. And there's there should be periods each year when you are in blitz mode. So I'm getting ready to do a big 90-day blitz in my business. My kids go back to school on Wednesday. I don't know if any, else, any of you are feeling uh, a sense of freedom looming uh, in the next couple weeks. But my kids, uh, they go back to school in exactly one week. And for the first time, we're going to have all of our kids in uh, in school full time, which is going to be pretty exciting. So I'm preparing to do a big blitz. But the most important is actually the minimums and the minimums that you hold on uh, on a regular basis. So those minimums for me and what I always recommend to my team is one class per week or five one-on-ones. If you're not doing that, you are retired. Okay, I'll just put it blunt, uh, two by four to the face. You know, you're totally retired if you're not doing one class per week for your own personal contacts that are not enrolled yet, or five one on ones with people that are not enrolled. This is just the minimum level of activity just to protect your doTERRA business and your doTERRA castle. Another minimum for me is 100 conversations. This is a 
uh, a principle that I took from uh, a mentor of mine, Eric Worry, who he teaches this concept of always having 100 conversations that are actively flowing. And this doesn't mean that you're inviting these people constantly to doTERRA, but just that at any time you're seeking to have 100 conversations that are open and in flow, maybe maybe asking them a question and then coming back to that conversation two days or three days later. And these are with people that are not yet enrolled in your business. Okay. So the reason why I, I think I've never lost a relationship in my doTERRA career with a builder of mine or with prospects, I've never really had to pressure people. And the reason is because I, I work with volume. I, I try to have so many contacts uh, and conversations constantly flowing that I never feel desperate or need to get into weird energy with people. Um, another minimum for me is one to two hours of intentional prospecting every single day. Now that means talk again, having those conversations with people that are not yet enrolled in doTERRA. Uh, there are a million different ways that you can find these people. Um, but starting a conversation and keeping a conversation flowing for me these are the these are the only hours in my doTERRA routine that nothing will ever interrupt. I because of those four years that we spent plateaued at platinum, I said never again will I only enroll one or two people per month. I my average uh, my constant goal is at least five to ten on a monthly basis. Um, and last year was actually the year that we enrolled more personally than any other year in our doTERRA business. Even 12 years in, we enrolled over 200 people last year. Again, that's part of what helped us uh, jump to the double diamond level. So um, yeah, so those are some of the minimums. Now I wanted to go through five momentum catalysts with you guys, and then we'll just open it up to questions and answers and we can go in any direction you guys would like to go. Uh, but these are five things that I have done that have helped to interrupt some of the plateaus that, that we've seen along uh, throughout our career. And the first one is when we learned um, this hot market approach that we started to incorporate as a system within our team's processes. The hot market approach, there's really two ways of doing this, but it's, it's essentially how do you help your newest wellness advocate get results within their first week. And my goal is, is to help someone. Um, I always like to help someone break even so that their kit is paid for within one week of them signing up. Okay. If they, if they haven't done that, then I have failed them as a mentor. That's my mindset. Um, and then obviously after that, our goal is that within their first month, they have some significant profit. If you help someone to get their first sale, with, so here's the here's the order. First sale within 24 hours of enrolling. Okay. Profit within one week. If you do this, you will guarantee 90 days of production from this, this wellness advocate. I've tracked it. And it doesn't have to be a big sale. They could sell one bottle of lemon their first day. Uh, and they could just sign up, you know, five people, six people to cover the cost of their kit. Um, it's not huge results. But if you do that, you have, you've literally bought yourself 90 days of production. So here's the way I do it. I sit down with each new wellness advocate that I enroll and we have them create a list of their warm market. And then we filter out through their warm market to find their hot market. Their hot market are usually the people that are closest to them. Those who, if their car broke down on the side of a road, these are the people that would come and pick them up, right? They're the people they could call just to help them out in any kind of a situation. Um, and so then once we have that list, it's usually 15 to 30 people. Um, and I have them send them a text where the text literally says, hey, Uncle Johnny, starting a new business. I could really use your help. Uh, can I call you to ask you a question? And that's it. That's the first text. Then when Uncle Johnny says, yeah, sure, give me a call. I help this person call them. And the whole conversation is just, hey, Uncle Johnny, I've started a new business. I'm not asking you to join it, but I need 15 to 30 trial customers in my first month to try my product one time. If you like it, then I'll help you get a discount in the future. If you don't, you never have to buy it again. Either way, you're going to help me with my marketing through your testimonial. Can I count on you to be one of my first 15 to 30 customers? That's it. Word for word. Word for word. Okay. And I have a video on YouTube called hot market approach it has that script written out so you guys can you guys can grab that if you'd like then um they can start by offering they could offer uh uh 
you know, depending on what market you're in, they could offer a, a simple solutions kit. They could offer a family essentials kit. It could just be an introductory kit uh, in, in some of the poor, the, you know, less favorable economic environments that I've worked in. We have people do this with an introductory kit. And so they're selling lemon, lavender and peppermint. And the most important thing here is not, not the commissions for the hot market approach. The, the most important thing is the psychological effect of someone getting a sale within 24 hours of joining the business, right? It proves to them, wow, this works. Um, and so I'll have people who sometimes they'll sell 15, 20, 30 of these intro kits for the retail price. So they're getting the retail profit. And then they can turn around and invite these people after they use the products to a class in the future and upsell them to a bigger kit and enrollment, right? So imagine if every single distributor that joined your team Imagine if they got a first sale within 24 hours. This is this is one of the things, this is one of the big catalysts that helped us to get out of that plateau of platinum and hit diamond is we started incorporating this as a system within our team. Um, you can do the same thing with a launch call or a launch uh, class. So you could reach out to those people and use the same script and say, hey, I could really use your help. I need 15 people to have butts and seats for me to do my presentation and practice my presentation uh, I know that you're someone that loves me. You'll give me your true and honest feedback on the products that I'm going to teach about. Can I count on you, you know, to be there at my launch event? So you could do it that way as well. Um, but I like to get people sales over the phone because it's fast and it and it uh, provides that proof of concept. So that's the first momentum catalyst. Um, the second one is class host blitz. So during the phase that we had hit diamond, but we uh, we hadn't hit blue diamond yet. I started going on tour and doing trainings with our wellness advocates. And in each event, uh, having everyone in the room reach out on, on you know WhatsApp or, on, or via text to their friends, their customers, and to book as many classes within a 20 minute period of time as possible. Um, since since you know the pandemic, we do this a lot on Zoom. So we had a launch, uh, like a launch training this last month with over a thousand people on our team. And, and we take 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the launch training process and we do a blitz like this. And, you know, in, in one event, there were times when we would have confirmations of hundreds of people willing to host classes. So you can imagine the kind of momentum that that creates. Like if each wellness advocate that's not doing anything on your team today, if all of a sudden they have five to 10 classes on their schedule, think about how that creates new energy. Uh, even it, it'll, it'll just wake them up. And if your team doesn't have momentum, in my opinion, that's the leader's fault. That's your fault. Okay. Again, another two by four to the, to the face of each of us. Like if our teams are not growing, obviously it's on them as well, but, but a, that's a part of our role. Like that's what we do, right? We get paid for three things, acquisition, retention, and multiplication. The multiplication is our job to create within our team. Uh, okay, so that's that concept. If you feel like your team is stagnant, then get out and do a, do a host blitz where you get on Zoom. You could offer some amazing prizes and help people with a script. And, you know, when they reach out to their friends and say, hey, I'm, I'm participating in this competition, I could really use your help. I can win by getting five hosts uh, for classes on my schedule for this next month. Can I count on you to be one of my five? It's, it's not a difficult thing to get a few classes on the books. Okay. Uh, the next Momentum Catalyst, this is, this is one that helped us really explode our business in the pandemic. Uh, it's called the Virtual Mass Class. And the way we do this uh, is we will set aside five days, Monday through Friday, where uh, we'll announce we'll announce the week prior that we're going to have a, a big open class for anybody on our team to participate and invite their prospects. And we do that, we announce it the week before and we schedule it for Monday, okay? And we do a Zoom class, just like you guys probably have done on your team before, an intro to the oils or intro to MetaPower or whatever topic you wanna focus on for this, this, uh, this virtual you know, class strategy. Then um, what we do is at the end of that class for all of the prospects, we say, hey, listen, we wanna get you started off right. Uh, we are actually doing another one of these classes tomorrow. And here's an invite for you to 
invite people. You don't need to wait for your products to get to you. You can already invite people that you feel like would resonate with this longevity message or with this, uh, you know, foundational health message or with whatever, whatever message, message you're teaching. We give them a video invite of, you know, the teacher talking about why people should come to the Zoom. So they have third party validation in the invite. And we get people to sign up and already invite people for the very next day. Okay? This is another way to, again, get momentum brewing quickly because these people could get some positive reinforcement. They could even get enrollments within 24 hours of building their business. And then in day two, you say, you do the call, you say, guess what guys, tomorrow we're doing it again. And then you do it for five days in a row, each day announcing that you're gonna do it for one more days. I found that after five days, the momentum kind of starts to wane. So. Um, when we were doing this in the pandemic, we our biggest our biggest class ever had six thousand people live attending. Um, so you can imagine that's just total insanity. Um, but you know you start and if you do it with fifty people and then day two it's sixty and then day three it's seventy and then you know eighty and then maybe it'll go down to fifty again day four. Um, it's it. it it just shows also social proof. So imagine the social proof when your team sees, wow, like each day we're we're growing in numbers. And you could say, well, Matt, what if we decline in numbers? What if we do day one and it's, you know, it's 50 people and then day two, what if it's 30? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the effort and it's the, 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 the energy that is the most important thing, okay? So uh, that's another strategy that we've used. That's a, a big momentum catalyst. Second, or the fourth one is, I don't know why I said second. So number four is this concept of 100 conversations, but you doing a challenge with your team for them to start 100 conversations. So for each of you that are here live or watching this recording, I would extend this challenge to you. Before the end of this weekend, I challenge you to start 100 conversations with people that are not enrolled in doTERRA. And these could be people that have been on your list for a long time, Again, you can just your whole the whole focus can just be talking about life. You don't have to bring up doTERRA at all. Uh, you could wait to bring up doTERRA for a month or two. I always wait for the right pivot point where I feel like someone is open, or or I feel like at least I've warmed up the the uh, the conversation so that they might be more open. Uh, but if you do this with your wellness advocates, you could do this on a monthly basis where you have a challenge for everyone to, before the end of a weekend, start up 100 conversations. And anybody who does this, there will be 20 out of those 100 who they will see an opportunity to pivot the conversation. And out of those 20, they could enroll five to 10 new customers on a monthly basis just from talking to people, just from people saying, hey, what, what's new in your life? Uh, give me an update and then them returning the question, what's new in your life? Well, let me tell you about this exciting new product that I've been I've been using, right? Or however you want to transition and pivot the conversation. Um, and then the fifth momentum catalyst uh, that works every single time in my business is creating one new success story. And here's how this works. Here's the concept. Let's say you're a silver. And let's say you've been at the rank of silver for four years and you have three elites. Okay. I don't know if there's anyone in this room that is, is kind of in this situation, or maybe you have people that have hit premier. Maybe you were a gold once, but you've been requalifying silver. The one of the best things that you can, and one of the only things that you can do for your existing team to really motivate them is for you to go out and build a brand new team. Okay. And all it takes is one new person on your team going from zero to premier and taking the lid of belief off of the jar that's been on your team for a year or two. And people start to question and think, well, well what's going on? Obviously, this is this is part of why, you know, some people have a culture in their business of being super reliant and focused on a system or a process. And there's value in systems. I've shared with you some systems that I use. But if all of your promotion is around how your team has the best systems, how doTERRA has the best systems, then when someone doesn't get results, what do they blame? They blame the system, <laughs> right? They blame the company. They blame the timing. Instead of looking in the mirror and, and, and blaming themselves, right? And 
when you have radical uh, when you when you have radical accountability that's where leadership is is born that's where leadership is developed and so creating one new success story in your team like it, this means you finding one person in your team that's highly motivated locking in and for the next 30 days spending 80 to 90% of all of your doTERRA time and energy into one person to just disrupt things and create one new result. This might mean you dropping in rank so that you can focus on one person that has desire and create a new story, a new story that you can go and share with those who are on your existing team and you can share with new people. And when somebody asks you, hey, how's your business going, right? You can say, oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe it. We have someone who went from zero to elite in their first month this last month. I'm so excited. We haven't seen this kind of momentum in our team in like a year. It's amazing how people are flocking to us because of this, this meta power line or whatever product it is that you're highlighting, right? So creating one new success story it's the only thing that can wake up those that you're dragging currently uh and it's the only thing that will inspire you and build your belief back like remember that belief when somebody new joined you and you were like i found a diamond like i found somebody who's going to be a diamond this is going to be amazing you need to have that level of enthusiasm, excitement, again, born inside of you. And that happens when you help one new person hit elite or premiere, uh, you know, you're, it, just, it just builds and it flows out of you. So one new success story, and this is true for every single level. Like if you're on this call and you've been elite for a long time, guess what? Your assignment is you need to help someone hit elite. You need to, you need to create a game plan to help one new person go from zero to elite in one month. And you may say, Matt, I hit, it took me six months to hit elite. I don't care. It's totally possible for you to help someone go from zero to elite in one month with enough, with enough planning and effort and massive action. And that's the story that your team needs. And that's the story that you need to get fired up and, and moving forward. So these are the five biggest momentum catalysts that have helped us during different phases of our business to get uh, into growth. Uh, if I could, if I could name one more thing, I would say enrolling influence. So looking, we we don't enroll people; we enroll circles of influence. Okay, in DoTerra, and so uh, this is not this is I don't share this with you for you to have the mindset of you know lottery ticket mindset like oh I need to get that one person. No, you need to become a massive enroller of a lot of people that have influence. Not get lucky and enroll one person that has influence. So here's an example of a guy on my team. His name is Bruno. He's a frontline blue diamond of mine. And I started a conversation with him in 2016, okay, 2016. Um, and he enrolled in my team two years ago. Okay, so for, what is that? I don't even know how many years. It was like seven, six or seven years of just talking to the guy, right? And he was someone of influence, someone who I knew, wow, I would love to work with this person. And I never, I never in the six or seven years invited him one time to join my doTERRA business. And you may say, Matt, why? That's crazy. Well, because he was someone of influence. I was waiting for the right moment. I was waiting, waiting for the right time. And truthfully, I was just focused on being his friend. Like that's when you know truly your intentions and your motivations are pure. When you're willing to wait six or seven years, just building a relationship with someone, <laughs> you know? So are you intentional about who you're building relationships with? He joined my team in his first month, him and this other guy next to him in this picture, this, this guy in this white t-shirt, both of them hit diamond in their first month, Okay. Uh, I've actually had now over 15 people on my team hit diamond in one month. Why and how? Because they were people of influence, right? We've seen some crazy things. So uh, I, I share this with you again. This screenshot is going, I, I share this with you because I want the shock factor. I want to blow your minds and I want you to see what's possible. Now, this is a top enrollers chart of our team. Uh, this was, mm, it's probably been, 10 months ago, I think. So the first thing you'll notice maybe is this huge number of this person that enrolled 844 people in a single month, okay? I think that's a company record. I'm not sure, but I think it's a company record. <laughs> it's, it's, 
it's insane, right? But I also want you to notice that even 12 years in, my wife and I, who are this ID uh, up above here, we enrolled 18 people, 18 people this month, okay? And that's a lot of people. That's not easy. We're not on. We're not like social media influencers. Every almost every single follower that I have on Instagram is someone who's already enrolled in DoTerra on my team. Okay, um, so this is not coming from social media. This is from us out there, you know, doing the work and finding new people to work with. Yes, some of it happens through social media, but not not from like an influence influencer perspective. The second one, this was an influencer, <laughs> okay? 844 people is insane. But you can also see our second top enroller did 82 enrollments in one month, okay? The next person, 58. The next person, 41. And there were probably dozens of people that had 20 or 30 enrollments on our team this month. So I share this with you because... Again, I don't want you to have the lottery ticket mentality of, oh, I need to have, I need to get this influencer or I need to, you know, enroll this one specific person. You want to have a lot of people joining your team that have a, a significant level of influence. Um, and as you do that, one of the ways that we, that we create this intentionally, okay, is each new person, we bake this into our culture. Each new person that joins, we ask them this question, who's the most influential person you know? That's one of the first questions I ask someone when they join me. Who's the most influential person that you know? And the whole strategy is for us to get that most influential person that they know in front of the person that we know that's making the most in doTERRA. <laughs> okay, so that's either me or it's my upline. And, and we get these influential people in front of a, a high earner so that we can we can show them a roadmap for how they could do something absolutely extraordinary. And when you bake this, so when you couple that hot market approach, helping every single person, no matter their level of influence, get a result in 24 hours, but you're also asking people who is their most influential contact, you're, you're leveraging both sides. You're helping, network marketing is all about helping a lot of people do a little bit to create a big impact in the world, right? But it also can be helpful when you find one person who can bring in a lot of people. <laughs> and some people, uh, the last thing I want to say about this is some of you look at this and you think to yourself, wow, this is irresponsible. How in the world are they taking care of 844 people? The fascinating thing is with this launch that we did with this guy, every single one of these new enrollments had a personalized conversation with a diamond or above before they enrolled in doTERRA, okay? Because there were five five diamonds in a row between me and, and this influencer. And all five of those diamonds were exclusively focused for one month on helping this one person launch in a, in a big way. We had WhatsApp groups. Every WhatsApp group was filled with prospects. And then they were opened up for just 15 minutes per day for people to answer their questions. And then diamonds were in charge of different Facebook or different WhatsApp groups to go in and answer people's questions, make sure that they knew everything that they needed to know to move forward. So if you are willing to do the work, you can systemize uh, support in a, at a, at scale, at scale. So again, I share these, th these ideas with you to get your mind. I want your mind buzzing. I want you thinking about doing something that you've never done before. And uh, the biggest thing that I'd say, if, if I could encourage you to do one out of all of the two, two out of all of the things that I've shared with you, it would be number one, before the end of this weekend, start a hundred conversations, just talking to people about life. That's it. Number two would be, well, I guess three. <laughs> number one, start your hundred conversations. Number two, start, start doing that with your team. And then number three, find a way to bake into your culture some of these concepts. And it might be as simple as just baking in a hot market approach and a question like, who is the most influential person you know? Um, so those, are, those would be some of the, the top recommendations that I'd have for you guys. Any questions? Awesome. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself. Or if you have a takeaway, I'd like to hear your biggest takeaway. Uh, from today's conversation. Oh, Marlies, I see you unmuted. 
Oh, yeah. Hi, Matt. Thanks for being here. Appreciate your presentation. Yeah. Um, where do we find your videos on YouTube? Um, if you, uh, I think the channel is called Matt and Shantae Hall. Uh, so, but if you just type in Matt Hall doTERRA, it, you'll, you should find me. And there's, there's a few because I have, I have them in different languages, but um, yeah, just go to the English one. <laughs> okay. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else questions or biggest takeaway? I always ask Jen what her, her biggest takeaway is. <laughs> Jen says, I look so different from my picture. So the beard, guys, I get to shave this off. Before convention, I won't have this beard anymore. I'm going to Norway with my my parents and my brothers at the end of this month. And so my brother and I had a challenge to both grow beards for our trip to Norway to honor our Norwegian ancestors. So it's kind of a silly thing. Uh, it's definitely not the way I normally look. So you're totally right. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I was the one that said that you look so different. Um, so I had, I love this. I, I really loved it. It's, it's simple streamlined. I've plateaued. Mm. So this, this video touched hard, you mm. know, and it's like, and, and to see where you did and base it simply on, look, your team is going to move only based on if you move. Yeah. And, and so I have to be, I have to do that. I have to like the hundred conversations easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think to myself, if, if I'm out there speaking and bringing people to Jesus, I can easily talk to a hundred people. Yeah. And so, and then in turn, it's like, yeah, if I'm doing this all the time, why am I following up with these quite like keeping in contact getting to know people, building a relationship. If you could build a relationship just in six to seven years, I'm a, I'm a touch and go. I need to start building more relationships rather than touch and go, mm. you know? Yes. And so I seen this for me. Beautiful. I love it. You're the momentum catalyst. Do it. <laughs> I love it. I got another uh, question. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if nobody else has a question. Okay. Um, can you talk to us more about the shift from elite to premier? You know, that that after that period of 10 months, yeah. no growth. Yeah. So, and it wasn't, the interesting thing is we actually had one team that was growing. So we were, we, I think when we hit premier, we hit premier with maybe 20,000 in volume. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so the the biggest difference for us going from elite to premier was simply getting over our fear of talking about the business. Uh, we my wife loved the products and we talked we talked and we talked about the business as well. Um, but when we finally absorbed the fact that truly the way to get the products into the most people's hands is by talking about the business. If you love the products, you will talk about the business because that's how you, that's how we move product. Right. And so when we finally embraced that um, and we started to show people a vision for not just talking about the business, but individually showing people a vision for what the business could do for their lives. That's when we, we attracted some people that really wanted to build with us and we broke through and we hit premiere and then shortly after, you know, silver, gold, and platinum, just a, a couple months after. So, good question. Thank you. Awesome. I see Aneta on the call. I'm not sure if you're able to um, put your camera on or unmute yourself. I know she builds in Europe and she builds in Pennsylvania. She's a excellent enroller. So what is your biggest takeaway or if you have a question for Matt? Hi guys, I'm sorry I was late. Um... I had some prior uh, commitment, so I didn't really get to hear. I was so excited to be here and uh, and he learn from you, but I see it was recorded. So hopefully maybe uh, we'll get the chance to hear more about uh, what you were teaching. But um, definitely um, it's nice that we can learn from, <laughs> from people like yourself. And uh, you already blown my mind when somebody is having like 800 enrollments. So I was like, wow that's that's amazing um i don't know what my takeaway uh yes i built in europe and and i saw you're a founder of brazil and here and there and i'm like oh my gosh how how do you do this so uh mm -hmm. you know sometimes we 
like I feel like um, sometimes I myself personally lose the focus and that's the biggest thing uh, when everything goes down like you know and uh, maybe lack of the proper system um, and like the duplication model so uh, when you were saying that you know we have to like if we love the product we offer the business I always am afraid of offer the business because I feel like I cannot lead that person um, you know duplicate uh farther so that's that's my bigger uh, problem and hopefully i can learn something from from you yeah go back and and comb through some of the ideas um and i don't i don't want to like i liked i i wanted to show some crazy things so that you guys could see the crazy but yeah. also realize that that that's atypical but all of your businesses will have atypical people and experiences if you set up the foundation for that to happen, right? It's just a question of time. And even, even at the highest levels, there's there's going to be ups and downs, right? We've had fluctuations of, you know, up up 100% and, up and down 40%, even at the level of presidential diamond in our volume, right? Uh, our income, your income becomes a little more stable, even as volume, like sometimes when you're at a, a, a level like ours, there's times when your volume will go down, but your bonus is, is significantly higher and your volume will go higher. Your bonus will go down because, you know, there's so much volume now outside of our level of influence, which is our seven levels where we're paid. Right. Anyway, but um, yeah, cons consistent consistency and boldness. You know, if you can be bold and start sharing the business with people, even with just your existing customers. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of look at it as a game where I, I look at it as a game of increasing levels of commitment. So I, you know, we have prospects, we have customers, we have loyal customers, then we have sharers, then we have builders, then we have leaders, then we have leaders of leaders. And and I'm always just looking for, I, I create lists of people on my team and I think, how can I elevate them just to the next level of commitment? So from a customer to a loyal customer, what can I do? And I brainstorm ideas. And then I think, okay, I have a loyal customer. How can I upgrade them to the level of commitment of a sharer? And I think, okay, how can I do this? I could get them to, I could ask them if they'd be willing to host a class. Sometimes it's just asking them if they'd be willing to post a story about their, uh, about a recent testimonial with a product and say, hey, if anybody is interested, reach out to my friend, Matt. And that's what I asked them to do. And I say, hey, if you do a testimonial on your stories, I will give you a free product. And I, am I going to get a sale from that? Probably not, but that's not the point. I'm getting them, I'm, I've increased their level of commitment a little bit to become a sharer. Now they're a sharer. All they did was share a testimonial, but they're a sharer, right? And so it's this game in my mind of how can I influence and increase commitment of people, you know, baby step by baby step. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I see Leia on the call. Are you able to unmute yourself? But if you guys are planning to, from this Hello. call to, oh, hi, Leia. And can you? Uh, camera as well. Do you have any takeaways or stuff? Leah builds in the Philippines and in California and all over the U.S. So, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, well, I really appreciate the sharing of um. You make a hundred conversations, and I think that's one thing that I really need to do because I will become hopeful of one team. And then so excited and the person is building. And then when it it finally will die or, you know, will kind of like scatter and will not have any um, any commitment. Um, if it dies down, then it kind of discouraged me. So yeah. I want to ask you what makes you motivated to keep on going? It's it's like, yeah, I, I, I kind of will hit the high and then suddenly, you know, I will see the the sales or the activity get lower and it kind of affects me. So, cause I put a lot of effort and money to it. So I just want to hear, um, you know, some uh, encouragement from you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, it is hard. And I, I don't want to diminish the fact that it's hard and that it's sad and that it's difficult when you have people that, 
you know, you get a new person and you're all excited about it and then they start and then they die. And um, I think that uh, a couple of things that have helped me. Number one is, again, I try to work with enough volume of people that when that happens, it, it not that it doesn't matter, but it doesn't affect me as much because I still have someone else that's winning. So I'm not satisfied with having you know, one of my personal enrollments growing well this month or two or three or four or five. Like I want a lot of people that are, that I'm working with and I'm pushing hard with um, because it is inevitable that some of them are going to give up. But if you have others that are still motivated and, and rolling. So I'll give you a very practical example. We have had an, ex I have a really big team in Brazil and we have had a terrible, terrible six months <laughs> like everything that you can imagine going wrong legal issues uh product stock issues haters you know uh bashing the network marketing model uh people actively targeting leaders people from other companies offering millions of dollars to strip away some of our diamonds and we've lost some diamonds like we've had some terrible things happening right at the same time I've been at the same time that I don't take my focus away from them. So I'm still working really, really hard with them. We just had a new guy on our team in Italy hit presidential diamond. And he did it in four months, in four months uh, since he of him joining us. And so there's some massive momentum with that team. And so because I'm be, again, it's just if you have diversity of leadership and you're just you're working really hard with a lot of people you're going to have some people that are doing well uh and it doesn't mean that you're not you're going to abandon those that are having struggles like as you're talking i'm thinking also about my team in the philippines right now like there's some that are on the brink of just giving up and there's others that are in momentum and doing great and uh, I'm not satisfied with that. Like I want 10 more personal enrollments of mine in the Philippines that are doing amazing. <laughs> and so that's part of it. And then you asked, you know, how do, how do I stay motivated when, how do I stay motivated when everything's going poorly? And the answer to that is just vision and discipline. Um, so I, I'm past the point of allowing my emotions to dictate my activity level. Right. And I think when you can get yourself there where your activity level has zero to do with the emotional state that you're in uh, regarding your business, uh, you become just like a train, like a train that cannot be stopped. Uh, and, it, you know, it's those wheels are just chugging and churning and there's going to be hills going up and there's hills going down. But my pace, it doesn't change the speed of my train. It just is constant. And so it's, I think my motive, I honestly don't have any motivation. I, I feel like right now, and maybe that's because I'm, I'm 12 years in and I just have seen so much of the ups and downs too. But at this point, it's pure discipline. It's really pure discipline mm -hmm. that keeps me moving forward. And just the vision of certainty that if I, because I've seen it throughout the 12 years, if I stay disciplined then the results come and they don't always come where I expect or when I expect, but they always, always come. It's that the harvest is inevitable. I need to turn off my, uh, I'm sorry for the notifications here. Um, so yeah. And, but I, I, I do understand that it is, it is hard. And so it, I think you just train your mindset to get to a state where your emotional state, you know, doesn't determine your, your level of input or energy. So Mm, amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate to hear those words again. Vision and discipline. Yeah. And um, yeah, just uh, and I like what you said about don't let emotion dictate your activity level. I think yeah. it's so important to be aware of that because uh, sometimes our emotions can really take us up or down. So emotions cannot be really the the catalyst on this uh, or um, the foundation, it needs to be really more within us, like yeah. go back to the vision and to have that discipline. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I think uh, one, one just last little thing that I'll mention is, and this might, 
you have to know yourself. So this might not be valuable for you. Um, but I, I, one of the things that motivates me is having really absurd, absurd goals. So like I have this goal of having, you know, 20 frontline diamonds, right? And right now for me, that's kind of absurd. I have six. So I have six and it's been 12 years, but I have the goal that by the end of this year, I'll have 20, <laughs> right? Wow. And so it's, wow. it's just uh, such a ridiculous goal that it, that that is something that motivates me when I have a vision to do uh, so much more than I've, than I've done. Um, and so again, you have to know yourself. Some people really like realistic goals. I like absurd goals that it mm -hmm. motivates me. So just, I think part of the reason I bring that up is just knowing your own personality and what motivates you, uh, I think. I think is important too for this journey. So thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, I see, do, see Marley's second. Yeah, oh, one real quick. Uh, do texts and emails count toward the hundred conversations? Um, I yeah, I do consider text conversations, or for me, a lot of it is on Instagram in the direct message or on Facebook Messenger. I consider those conversations. Yes. Um, thank you. But, but they're only a conversation if there's back and forth. So it has to be continual back and forth. And the hard part's not starting the hundred conversations. The hard part is keeping them going. And yeah. so, you know, get them, get them started, but then realize that you need to have a list of those and you need to keep them going. Minimum, you're talking to each person every three days. That's, the, that's the minimum. So, so hundred conversations with hundred different people, right? <laughs> that's it. I'm just kind of curious for the people in the chat, put a one if you're going to implement being a massive enroller, put a two if you're going to create a story of success with someone or put a three if you're going to do 100 conversations. Put a four if you're going to do all three. I know there was five, but I just put those three. So yes. one, if, you want, if you're going to start enrolling massively, I know some of you already are. I see a lot with 100 conversations. How many of you are going to create a story of success in your team? A brand new person hitting, hitting a rank, whether it's elite or premier or something new so you can re-engage two and three very good awesome 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 i really appreciate matt's uh vulnerability transparency i love people that are just real and straight up because i feel like we learn from that and you know just especially numbers i like numbers and um yeah just a lot of good nuggets over here i guess my question that i've always wondered and you've a lot of people and you answered this, but why do you think um, when our enrollments go down, our business goes down? Because it's like, hey, other people are enrolling. Why is it when we stop, our business goes down? Why do you think? And why do you think when our our personal enrollment goes up, our, our and why it's important to do personal enrollments? Why why is there a correlation? Why is there magic in personally yeah. enrolling? <laughs> yeah, I think you know. I think part of it is energetic, like people, uh, there's, there's the concept of, you know, follow my, follow my lips or follow my feet. Uh, people, you can tell people all day what they should do, but they're going to follow your feet. They're going to do what you do. Right. And if they don't see footsteps in the sand to follow, then they're going to, they're, they're going to watch your lips move and they're going to stare at you as your lips move, but they're not, they're not going to to follow. And so, and there will be exceptions, like, especially as your business grows, you might have one team that takes off. And because that leader just keeps moving and enrolling, uh, their team continues to grow. Um, but I've seen it. I've, I don't know the exact why, but I can tell you that I've seen it at the very highest levels. Like I've seen double blue diamonds on my team who, if they go six months without enrolling, it's catastrophic. It, it it's and it, it's it's not a small decrease like they'll go down 20 or 30 percent in their volume obviously they have good customer base but their their new enrollments will just will just disappear on their team so um yeah the 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 speed of the pack depends on the speed of the leader in in many ways i think part of it is energetic i think that people can see they really know uh even just like the the tone of your voice um I don't know. I just think, I think people can feel it. So that's the biggest reason. I think it's just example. Um, and there's probably some, some mystery energetically that I don't understand that, that plays into it, but, but it's real. 
Awesome. I know we're at the hour mark and I want to respect your time and everyone else's time. I also want to put a shout out and thanks for everyone on the call being vulnerable about their business. Uh, but before we leave, is there any one take one more takeaway? We have a lot, <laughs> but one more takeaway before we leave uh, that you wanted to message that you want to um, leave to our team. Yeah, I think the last thing I'd say is just, um, you know, you have to be in the boat. You have to be in the boat and you have to be rowing. Those are the two things. Like you just have to stay for long enough. It took us seven years and seven months to hit presidential diamond. It was not fast, right? And it was seven years and seven months of being in the boat and rowing, rowing those oars, right? Pull, pull, pull over and 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 over again. So that's the last thing I'd say is be in the boat, but don't be a spectator. Be be rowing the boat. Um, and success really is inevitable if you are doing that. If you're in the boat and you keep moving forward, uh, at some point, your breakthrough is going to happen. And you never know when or who or how, but it will come. Uh, uh, it will come. So that's it. Awesome. Everyone, thank can you say thank you? And we really appreciate you, Matt. This has been very helpful. We have it recorded for those that haven't gone on the call or would like to see it again. So this has been really thankful. We really appreciate you. So if you appreciate Matt, unmute yourself, say thanks. and uh, we'll Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Matt. Thank, Thank you. you. And good luck with your 20 diamonds in the front line. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're yeah, cheering and, for you. And have a good trip to the Nordic country. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. You definitely look, you have a look for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Holland, for having that. Very Thanks, good. Holland. That was awesome. Yes. Well, Thank Holland. you. Thank you. We'll see you. Better run. Okay. That I.